Hello, Ron. Hello, Ron. Oop. Ooh, 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 I'll be the one to take the risk to go and get them bands I'll be the one to never sit and go and make a plan Knowing my mother getting old and I don't got no time Gotta keep a couple for the road or else get left behind Yeah, To the hundreds, pledge allegiance, I stand I'm going to pull four in the fucking white sand I give it all to this fucking mic stand If it's been done before, then I know I can I'm on the rise, I'm trying to keep a level head Alright, yo, what's the deal, y'all? I hope all is well. Welcome back to another episode. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. And this is nice and neat. Yes, sir. Fellas, today, today, today. What we talking about? What we talking about? We talking about something that's brought a lot of stress to all of us. Stress. 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 I know for sure me. I know that for a fact. Um you know, being someone who has, I've actually never had a job before in my life. I've always what worked you, for myself. Well, that's a job. No, no, I mean, I've never worked for anyone else. There you go. Ooh. I've never there worked for anyone else. So I've, I always say I never had a job because it's just kind of like, this is just my life. Yeah. Yo, this never happens this soon, but let's give a round of applause for Jamal. <laughs> 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 We're never working for anybody's you know, entire life. That's amazing. That's, that's you know, so come on, so come, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, no Thanks doubt. for those flowers. No I appreciate doubt. it. No doubt, bro. So if you guys can't tell by now, we're going to be talking about entrepreneurship today. We're mm. going to be talking about entrepreneurship. We're going to be talking about being able to create a life of your own for your own. Mm -hmm. That's That's really how I look at entrepreneurship. And, you know, I know I've been, I've never seen anything else. I don't know what anything else looks like. And I don't know what anything more looks like. I don't know what anything less looks like. This yeah. is, you know, the life of an entrepreneur is kind of how I live my life. You know, it wasn't one of those things when it became cool, I was like, I want to jump in or right. it's not something that I was mm -hmm. forced into. Right. You know, it was just kind of always how I live my life. And you guys have had uh, NFL careers and you guys transitioned into the life of entrepreneurship. You guys yeah. could have, I'm sure, been in front of the cameras and doing things you know, related to sports and you guys decided to dive into entrepreneurship. So I did wanna know, what were some of the hardships that you faced? Cause this shit is not all glamorous, man. No, It's not all shit. glamorous, it's oh, not all it's glamorous. not all glamorous. You told us in the previous episode, you just were worried about $100 a, a day. day. So where are you at with that now, man? Well, I'm. Uh, thank God, I'm, I'm far exceeding a hundred dollars a day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank God, praise God, God is good, man. God is the greatest. Um, but I think you know part of the reason why I wanted to become an entrepreneurship. I don't know about Duke, but you said you've never had a real job. I, yeah. on the other hand, have had five real jobs. Like, let me okay. break it down for you. Okay. okay. I, I used to work at Build a Bear. My first job was Build a Bear, stuffing bears for kids, nagging ass ball. kids. Just going crazy. Happy, happy birthday from Builder Bear to you. We'll help you pick your bear. We'll help you stuff it too. <laughs> yeah. That type of shit, right? All right. Then I worked at Best Buy. All right. That was one of the, probably the best jobs of, you know, my young Were life. Were you the plug at Best Buy? I was the plug for CDs, freaking audio equipment, everything. You, you, anything you needed, come holler at me. One thing I can't do, I can't drop the fee on the Geek Squad. Like, they got to do it. So you couldn't give out the head units and, like that? No, I could get the head units, but, like, I can't do nothing about them coming and installing, installing it. it. Okay. Uh, That's on you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, I definitely was a plug. That was the coolest time in my life. And then I go, I get to college, um, and I was chasing paper thinking, you know, it didn't matter. I ended up doing a construction job. It was paying me really well, but I was like, hell no, this shit is not for me. Right. And then I worked with It was like, tough. It was it was hot. First of all, it was Arizona. Okay. In the middle of the summer. It was hot. I'm lifting up shit. I've know? actually never known that you did this. This nah, is I'm, this is news to me. <laughs> New shit to me. <laughs> First time. Am I like construction? Construction. 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 This, and this is actually before I started my college career. Damn. But this like in the summer leading into college. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But I was there was and high school. I was I hadn't got accepted into college yet. So like I needed a way to put some some paper in my pocket. Yeah. Right. And then I, later on in my um, in my time in college, I worked at the rec center. So I was basically like a basketball coach or yeah, yeah. a football coach, whatever That's it is. Fun. Intramural case, type stuff. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. That was fun, right? But I get to the league, right? And then, you know, I'm blessed and fortunate enough to make some paper, right? And I have, you know, an untimely exit. You know, you guys know the story if you haven't already go back and watch the previous episodes or listen to the previous episodes. But from those those experiences, you know, and me having a little cushion, you know, I kind of decided that like, 
I don't think I really want to work for anybody else anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I want to, you know, I heard Duke speak to this, you know, I want to use my time and my resources wisely. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I feel like I could create a business for myself yeah. um, and do things that I really want to do. And even if, even if I don't want to do them, I know they're for the better of my business and mm -hmm. my future, not someone else's. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So like that, that right there really encouraged me to, to hop into entrepreneurship. But I say all that to say, like, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I never was, do, right? I never, you never do. You know, I was like, I just want to jump in. I want to start my own business. Yeah. You know, I want to start my own business. And right now what I'm leaning towards is fitness. Okay, great. Let me, let me go ahead and start my own business and start mm -hmm. making my own money, you know, and kind of save myself from Uncle Sam, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because like, you know, for those people that don't know, there are different benefits you get from starting a business, yeah. you know, that you don't get from, from not starting one. So, yeah. Yeah. I've had two jobs. I've had two jobs. I've, I worked at a rec center okay. right, when yep. I was um, 15, 16. And then I worked at Hollister. Right? Oh, that's a plug. You know when Hollister, Them hoodies? You yeah. know when Hollister and Amber yeah. probably was popping pop in high in. school? Popping. Yeah. Pop in. I worked, so I got the you know, employee discount. But it wasn't me. It wasn't me because I had to fake yeah. Greek people. Oh, you were the black guy too. I was a black guy, right? Yeah. Hollister is very not black. It's surf. You get it's surf. 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 Hollister is surf. So yeah. I did that and then... You know, shortly went on to college. In college, I didn't work, right? Because scholarship, financial aid, loans, that type of deal, I didn't work. Um, and then I went up to play in the NFL, so I would consider that, or well, three jobs, because that is a job, right? you know? And um, I knew quickly I didn't want to work for anybody because my dad was an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. right? My dad was an entrepreneur. My brother's an entrepreneur. Um, so I knew that the lineage in my family didn't even like, we weren't even like people that worked for other people, mm -hmm. right? It wasn't common. So I already knew in the back of my mind, when, whenever I'm done playing, whether I'm done playing in three years, 10 years, I'm working for myself, mm -hmm. right? I don't care what that looks like, you know? And I believed in myself enough to, and trusted myself enough to like, whatever it was, I can learn it, you know? And once I got done playing, I was like, yo, okay, what am I good at? Mm -hmm. Naturally, right? Fitness, fashion, right? Sports, right? I'm doing sports, but I'm like, what am I doing? What am I good at naturally? And I'm like, all right. Well, I, I know I can go to fitness anytime because mm -hmm. I because I, I know it, right? Really I know seamless. it. I've spent the last fifteen years working out, doing all types of conditioning, all types of you know training. Mm -hmm. I know that, mm -hmm. right? The learning curve is not steep, but mm -hmm. fashion, let's get into it right now because mm -hmm. I got time. <laughs> so although, right, the, the you know, you get into fashion and yeah, I'm fashionable and I can dress, but entrepreneurship and being a business owner and creating a system and creating a company and creating a brand is something completely different, right? And that shit hit me in the face because it's something that I did not expect Right, everyone always thinks that because they know something and they know how to do something, that it's going to be easy to transition. So previously to diving into fashion, what did you know? What did you about know fashion. about entrepreneurship? About about entrepreneurship. Besides watching your dad, what did yeah. you know about entrepreneurship? Okay, nothing. <laughs> nothing. No, no, <laughs> nothing. Like nothing. Right, you know nothing Zip about zero. entrepreneurship. You don't realize how strenuous it could be. You don't realize how lonely it could be. You don't realize how stressful it could be. Mm -hmm. You don't realize how much money it takes, mm -hmm. right? How much time and commitment and effort it takes. You don't no, none of that. Mm -hmm. Right? You don't even think of it as entrepreneurship at first. You just think, "Okay, I'm opening up this." Right? Or I'm using the craft to do this, right? Um and then shortly you're like, "Oh, this is real life." No one's helping me. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, no company. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is real life. No, oh, no one cares because no one the world's going to go on. Mm -hmm. You know, no one cares. And I think that's when it hit me and I realized, okay, well, I really got to start like learning what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And learning, not only learning how, because it's one thing to be a fitness trainer or, or, or coach or, um, you know, uh, a, a, a barber. Right, that has a brick and mortar spot or a fashion designer, but it's another thing to learn the business, right? Yeah. Nor usually business is like an umbrella thing that you could take this model and it's applicable to this model yep. and applicable to that model, right? Mm -hmm. But what we think is like, all right, we look we're looking at the specific craft mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's what hurts like first time entrepreneurs mm -hmm. until you like go through the ringer and stuff yeah. like that. But um 
you know that's well, I, it's it's good that you said that because somebody could be doing their craft and they're like i'm yeah. a businessman yeah when in actuality you're still working like you're not a businessman you're still just actively working yeah and one thing that was really tough for me is you know i've been cutting hair i was cutting hair i started when i was 13 years old you know so i, I learned how to pick up five dollars ten dollars here and there early, early yeah yeah early really soon before i even was considered Be entrepreneurship before it was even considered entrepreneurship it was just like i want to get a pair of vans yep you know, I, I gotta cut. I gotta cut X amount to get this. You know, I just that was just something that I just knew really early. So you got to keep in mind, it was always a, it was always a just to generate money thing. It was never like, oh, this is a business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as I got older, and I remember when I moved into my first apartment, and I had, you know, my my original. I moved to my first apartment. I was twenty one years old. I had my first. Uh, my, and when I say my first apartment, I mean like outside of college, not yeah, the yeah. college apartment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because we all get a college apartment, yeah. 18 years that old. Don't that don't count. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got my first apartment. My first apartment, and, you know, I'm trying to scale my business at the same time. And I remember it was a point where I sat back and I was like, dog, I'm learning how to pay bills and trying to run a business at the same time. I don't know how to pay bills for real. Mm -hmm. You know, you get a bill for $138. She's like, oh, you just pay $138 and like that's it, right? But next month, that $138 is going to come again. And I never created like a budget. Yep. Structure. I never created a structure. It was just kind of like money, make money, spend money, make money, spend money, make mm -hmm. money, spend money. And I just continuously kept doing that until I sat back and I was like, we're going to be in the same place if we keep doing this. <laughs> you know, we're going to be in the same place if we keep doing this. There's no structure here. Mm -hmm. Like there's no business here. Mm -hmm. And... When I was, I was the first shop that I was working in, I was just working in there. I was paying my booth rent. I'm like 21, 22 years old. I'm making the most money I've ever made in my entire life. I'm going to Vegas every weekend, every other weekend. I'm blowing it. I'm spending money. I'm getting, and when I say, look, hey, I'm getting, I'm getting the wraparound suite people talking about today. I'm, get, get, I'm getting that 10 years ago. Yeah, you're getting to it. You're getting to it. Right. So like, I'm, yeah, I'm getting that 10 years ago. to the money, fam. So I'm, I'm making money, but- I'm I'm not seeing any my my money is not working. It's not yeah. growing. It's not it? growing. It's not growing at all. Yeah. I'm just however hard I work, that's yeah. how much money I'm gonna make. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, okay, this isn't really scalable or sustainable. Yep. If I stay in this position. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I had to get my own location. Yep. You know, and, and part of the reason of me getting my own location was not just the look of it. It was it was understanding what taking care of real responsibility look like and kind of creating a system around it. Mm -hmm. So like, honestly, I don't believe that I really entered entrepreneurship until I opened my first location mm -hmm. because now it made me understand if I don't show up, this place goes down. The shop I was working at, it, with or without me, it was gonna be there. It was there before me, it yep. was there after me. Yep. Mm -hmm. So. When I moved into my, my first location, it was like, okay, now let me start looking at how much I pay for booth rent at this place. If I pay this amount for booth rent, I can afford to now pay this amount over here. Cool. So now my price range of the spot that I can get has to now be, it has to fall here. And it was the first time I've ever thought like that. Mm -hmm. Before it was just money going out, money going yeah, out, yeah. money going out, money going out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, if I'm going to be paying for the rent at this place, right? Now, how can I make more money? And then I started to learn about value. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have to provide more value to be able to get more revenue. Mm -hmm. I associated value with revenue. Value and revenue, for me, always went hand in hand. And that was like one of the real key components that I learned within entrepreneurship. You know, if you pay attention to anything in life, you know, the more people that you can touch, the more money that you can essentially make. Look yeah. at the people who touch the most amount of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, people who have, money. you know, they make the most money. Make the most money. Right? So I know that I had this struggle at 21, 22 years old. And, you know, I got to sit back and I watched you guys' entrepreneur journey. And your 
your you know excuse me but you know your y'all shit was so much more seamless than mine was yeah you know even though i know it was hard yeah. i know that it was Woo. dark i know that it was tough mm -hmm. but i feel like you guys weren't in the play play phase that yeah, i yeah. like i was kind of in you guys came into it as adults yeah, yeah. and it wasn't entrepreneur wasn't even a term for real that's what i'm mm -hmm. saying when i was doing this this was just like yo jalan's a bit of a rebel he doesn't really want to work for anybody doesn't want this is what it looks like yeah wants to leave school he, he yeah he wants to leave school yep. you know and he doesn't want he's and he's gonna make it work mm -hmm. you know so i just really I, I shouldered it right but it was so many mistakes that i made i want to know along your along your journey Right, because we're gonna get into we're, we'll get into mine, but like matter of fact, Duke, what were some of the biggest mistakes that you made that you learned specifically through entrepreneurship? Man, this is this is wild because like since I've been in entrepreneurship, and it's not like we're the craziest, biggest entrepreneurs in the world, and we're still growing, oh, we're still, still growing, still, still learning, learning. Right? Play, still, playing the same game, still green, still right? green. But man. when you're entrepreneurship and and you, when you do entrepreneurship and you're or you're an entrepreneur and you are public about it, because you have to be public about it, right? Because you're your brand, you're your brand, right? Mm -hmm. So now people come up to us and or young cats come up to me and say, "Yo, hey, like, how is entrepreneurship?" And they say things like, "Yo, like, how do I know to, if I should be an entrepreneur?" Right? And um, just use my story if you listen to this, like, just kind of use what we're talking about, and you be the judge of that. All right, so. I stopped playing football, right, in 2000, and I think my last year officially playing a full season was 2016, and then I played a half season in 2000, or a fall camp in 2017, right? Immediately after that, I got into fashion down on Law 17, all right? So I knew I wanted to do something in, clo in clothing and fashion because that's what I was interested in, right? I think that once you're, you know, a when you're a first-time entrepreneurship, you should always do things that you're interested in, mm -hmm. right? Or do things that kind of come natural to you or that you do better than everyone else, mm -hmm. right? That's like the, a great starting point. Because if you don't do something that you're knowledgeable about knowledgeable about, or have some kind of foundation um, already, then you're gonna be fighting two learning curves yeah. mm -hmm. or multiple learning curves. You're yeah. gonna be trying to learn about the product, service, craft, and you're gonna be trying to learn about entrepreneurship, Excuse. Excuse. right? Mm -hmm. And Throw marketing on top of that and branding Jeez. on top of that, right? So the least you could do to put yourself in a, you know, a good position is start with something that you're already interested or knowledgeable about. Wow, so if I've great. been training for ten years in fitness, right? I know that there's a whole different ball game to like being an entrepreneur, um, being a fitness entrepreneur. But at least I have the basics about fitness, yeah, right, to move forward, right. So my challenge was, although I was fashionable and I had style, and I knew about clothing, right? I didn't know fashion terminology, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? I didn't go to school for fashion. I didn't understand merchandising, right? I didn't understand where to, the, the wholesale versus cut, cut and sew, right? I didn't understand or know what manufacturers to go to, right? So I was really going to everything just like naive and, and blind, mm -hmm. right? But my mistake was, jumping into it without searching for a mentor oh, man, or man. someone that I can have, I can have direct access to, right? Someone that I have, like literally I could text all the time. Hey, would I do this? Would I do this? Would I do this? And being able to trust somebody mm -hmm. because it would have saved me so much money, so much time, so much headache. Right. So that was one of my biggest mistakes is jumping into it without like getting help. Yep. Right. But I was always stubborn. I'm like, yo, I'm just going to figure it out because I trust myself so much mm -hmm. to figure things out because that's how I've always been. And honestly, that comes naturally from just being an athlete. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm taking the, all the skills and, and the bravado and the ego that I got from playing sports and trying to apply that to business. And it's not the same thing. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. not it's not the same game. Right. With business, you got to be really strategic and you got to plan. Right. And you got to ask for help. Mm -hmm. Right. That's why people go public with their companies because they get help from uh, the, the public, the yep. people to help, help invest in their company, yep. you know? Um, secondly, what I would have did is I would have started small, super small, mm -hmm. right? Mm. Start small. Anything you do should start small if you're a first-time entrepreneur and especially if you're doing it by yourself, Yeah, right? Because you got to learn how to manage mm -hmm. what's going on, mm -hmm. right? So in my particular case- Very underrated. You know, 
you just have to like learn that skill. Even like in my particular case, even if I'm this popular influencer and you know, I know everyone's gonna buy everything I sell, right? It's still not smart for me to order a thousand pieces of t-shirts to sell. Yeah. Because I don't even know how to track inventory. I don't mm. know how to pack inventory. Mm. I don't know how to store, right? I don't even know how to, um, you know, choose the sizes to make, choose what colors to make, how many skews and skews. There's all these things that pertain to it that I have no knowledge of, yeah. right? So if I had to do it again, I would start with, okay, I'm selling one T-shirt. I'm selling a T-shirt, right? Why, why am I selling a t-shirt? Because it's easy to ship. It's easy to pack, right? People don't think about buying a t-shirt. You can wear a t-shirt all the time. Men and women can wear t-shirts. It's mm-hmm. light, right? It's low maintenance, right? All these things, that's how it started, right? So all the, so like starting small, finding a mentor was like the two main things um, that I would I would do differently. And I think that applies to everything. Yeah. Every entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial journey, any business, any brand, I think that's just that's how it should start. Yeah, I, I think for me, too, I, I, and I think anybody should feel like this, too. I think for me, it's definitely I wish I would have found a mentor early. You know, I, I didn't have that. You know, someone just like Luke said, just to help, you know, walk kind of walk me through the situation. Yeah. But one thing I don't be really transparent with you, all you know, I, and I don't <laughs> I don't know about you guys. But one thing I, I made a, a really big mistake on. And going back to like not planning to have like not even planning for like a structure in place inside of my business was like I was making money as a business. Well, first of all, I thought I was making money as a business, but I didn't create a business yet. Right. I just said, oh, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> Either just I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Right. I'm, I'm going to start my own business. But I didn't like legally I didn't start my own business. Mm. Right. But before I get into that, one thing that I was doing, the biggest mistake I think that I was doing initially early on was. I wasn't reinvesting my money back into my business. So mm. I wasn't setting my business up to have a structure yeah. to grow. Yeah. Right. Mm. I was mm-hmm. like, my business was really in place just for me. Yeah. Right. And when you think about a business and scaling the business, like you think about growth, right. And uh, acquiring or not acquiring or hiring employees to work for you. So your business operates while you're no longer there. Right. Mm. I was just paying myself thinking I'm making money as a business, you know, and, you know, taking that bread and obviously, doing whatever I needed, life, doing life, life. Yeah. doing life with it. Right. But I, I initially, when I first started the business, I was not reinvesting back into my business. And if you don't have a, someone who's uh, investing into your business or a loan from someone, then how do you expect the business to grow or even withstand financial hardships? Right. I'm, I'm taking all the bread out and mm-hmm. paying myself. Mm-hmm. Right. So that was one thing. And then another thing was actually starting creating an LLC for myself, mm-hmm. you know? Like I like I said, for the first year, I was just doing business as Omar Bolden without officially doing business, like without- You didn't have an entity. Right? I didn't have a DBA. Yeah. I just literally told myself, and I don't know who told me to tell myself <laughs> that you could just start a business without, right? But I just had no mentorship, right? I had no yeah. guidance. I had no guidance. That's so how I was, be, yeah. I'm just lost, man. I'm just out here doing my own thing, right? And, it, you know, I ended up, end up catching the short end of the stick on that, right? Yeah. I end up having to pay money back on my taxes, mm-hmm. right? For not having mm-hmm. right the write-offs or just a, a a true business. So like for me, it's like reinvest not reinvesting my money back into my business and then not doing the research early to know what kind of what you're gonna it, need. What I'm yeah. gonna need. Yeah, how you gonna be able to how I'm it. gonna be able to operate this yeah. business. Right. So like people have to understand that entrepreneurship means <laughs> full liability and no security. Yep. And that is part of the reason why the majority of people actually stay away from entrepreneurship because they don't have the security of knowing, hey, if I could if I take a sick day today, I can still get paid. Yep. You know, there's there's no paid sick days in entrepreneurship. No, sir. There's no paid sick days in entrepreneurship. And that's something that people have to understand. I I, I like how you guys said the the importance of a mentor. Cause I feel like that's actually what pushed me through. You had one. I had one. Mm-hmm. I, I I worked under one. Yeah. I got to see him run the business. He allowed me to pay bills when I was really young. Mm-hmm. So I got to see the importance of learning all of the rules before you can break them. Yeah. And that's that I think within entrepreneurship, something that's really important. The reason why you see these, these su- super huge, um, 
these Fortune 500 companies thriving is like you have to understand the guy who made that company was an entrepreneur as well. Yeah. He just happened to learn the ins and the outs of his business. Mm -hmm. And then he began to break rules. You can't break rules before you understand 110 percent of what it is that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I had to learn because so easy to cut corners when you're in, and especially when you're in a cash business, most entrepreneurs are in cash businesses, you know? So it's part of the reason why you become an entrepreneur. So you can be in a cash business and you think like, Oh yeah, you know, I won't pay this on my taxes. I don't have to do this. I can hide this. I don't have to claim this, you know, but if you continue to claim total losses when you really want to buy something, for those that don't know, you can only claim total losses for three years. For three years. Anything right? anything after that, they come to get their bread. They come to get it. And, and whether they you will, get it. willingly cut right. the check for them or they have to seize it out of your bank account. Mm. Right? So um, I know Omar's going to dive into this more because I know this was a hardship for him. Um, but I know one thing for me that it took me a while to do is I was I was operating the same way he was. I was just, oh yeah, I'm just running a business. I didn't have any legal paperwork. Man. I didn't have a DBA. I didn't Man. have an LLC. You know, I definitely wasn't playing the S Corp game and I wasn't doing that. Man. You know, I, I didn't do that. I didn't do any of that. And then the IRS sent me a letter. The IRS sent me a letter and was just like, yo, bro. It didn't say yo, bro, but they might as well. <laughs> might as well say, yo, bro, we're gonna need that. Yo, bro, we need that. We, we know you've been making money and we, you know, we need that. And I was like, oh, but my, my business took a total loss. It was like, well, we don't see Jalon Webster taking any losses. Mm. It looked like Jalon Webster is doing really well. Yeah, it looks like Jalon Webster. Oh, and the, in the, we see transactions as well, you know. So run me my money. Yeah, run yeah, me get, my money. Give me that. Run me my money. We, we see transactions from Vegas. So uh, it looks like you're doing pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so um, I, I would definitely say you must learn every single rule before you can before you should even move forward. You should sit down and you should dive into it. Another thing that I thought was extremely profound that Duke said was being able to have access, not just a mentor, but being able to have access to the questions that you need answered. You know, being able to 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 know the difference between cut and sew, you know, and wholesale and wholesale. Yeah. Now tell 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 <laughs> price wise, price wise, tell me the difference between cut and sew and wholesale. Price wise, right? So cut and sew. Cut and sew is a more intricate, detailed process, right? That costs more to produce, right? Because the clothing or product or whatever you're making is specific to your liking. Right, you want a unique product that no one else has, right? So you're creating it from scratch or creating it based on your design. Wholesale would be basically buying products that are made already and just putting your brand it, branding it with your logo or your name and reselling. Are those two different licenses or they come with the same license? Can you do it under the same license? No, or? as long as you have as long as you have a seller's permit. Okay. Right. You can sell. Do you have to have a business license without having a brick and mortar? Do you have and to And a ha- brick and mortar, guys, for those who are listening, a brick and mortar is actually a, a physical establishment you can show up to. You don't have, you, you need you need a business license. You don't need a brick and mortar to sell anything. I mean, you don't, you, you need a business license even without a brick and mortar. Do, without a brick and mortar, Got yeah. you. Do okay. you know by any chance off the top of your head, like how much product you have to move before, um, having a seller's before you need a seller's permit no no it doesn't matter how much product you have if, if you're right? moving if you move one piece one piece of Any, one okay some, so, one one item one product you yeah. need a seller's permit so if you sell a physical product you need a seller's permit mm-hmm. right if you sell something like a service that's a digital product you don't necessarily need a seller's permit right so if you're selling um fitness programs online you don't need a seller's permit right but if there's a, a actual physical exchange then you need to sell a printer for those for those products. I have been able to see. So that's one thing about having a brick and mortar in California. I think I, I had to have a seller's permit as well for products that I right. sold. But one thing it did help by having a seller's permit was I didn't have to pay the taxes. taxes. I didn't have to pay the taxes, the taxes on 
on the uh, individual yeah. items. So yeah. that was that was beneficial. But man, I had to have a lot of licenses, bro. Right, right. I had to have a business, actual business license. Yep. I'd have to have a seller's permit. I had yeah. to have a lot of things, you know, in order to just operate without cutting one head. Yeah, yeah. And when you have brick and mortar, it gets even more complicated because there's like, if you have employees, insurance. Compliance, oh my goodness. Right, there's like workers. Oh my gosh. Uh, compliance workers and comp. Like, and like the environmental stuff and yes. working conditions. No. No, it gets crazy. It gets, it gets crazy. crazy. It gets crazy. You gotta but have business at home. Oh, okay, they have time. Oh, it is up, half time. Up, it is half time. What's the deal, y'all? Welcome back to the Nice and Neat Halftime Show. It's your boy O, and I'm your host as usual. You know, uh, the first thing I want to get into first and foremost, you know, we got things that we want to promote here, and we we will be fools not to use our own platform to promote the things that we have going on so if you're looking for ways to chisel that midsection get that six pack right for the summer tap in with alpha burn or alpha burn.com to get your six week ab guide and get right yo it's changing people's lives over there secondly if you're looking for ways to improve your movement and become a better athlete head over to omarcbolden.com and download the how to move like an athlete program 12 week guide that you could do at home in the gym wherever you like all right so i want to get into today's mvp and this today's mvp is very very special because today's mvp comes from a review that was left on our podcast app on the apple podcast app and the review comes from whitney ham all right by the way i just want to i just want to take this moment to shout out whitney because she is a real live supporter she is constantly yes, constantly reposting our stories sharing our posts and we love you so much for that so let me let me get into her 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 comment it was what an incredible podcast thank you to the fellas for your openness so many key points to top it off the authentic humble and you all have a great sense of humor some things mentioned resonate so deeply with not only men and women as well and i'm grateful for everything that y'all shared yo shout out to you whitney for dropping that beautiful 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 review uh, on the podcast app by the way if you guys are listening please head over to the podcast app and drop us a review as well maybe you'll get a shout out on the next episode or on the next live um as you guys can see i've pinned what what today's topic is um uh, is about um and that's entrepreneurship so we want to dive into that so any questions you guys may have now i i just want to put it out there you know we're not the greatest entrepreneurs in the world we don't have the answer to every question but we do want to share the experiences that we have and maybe share the mistakes that we've we we've made along the way to hopefully help you guys um not take the same steps or bypass a step um if you know what I mean. Um, so I want to get into uh as as comments and questions begin to file in I want to get into a uh, question uh, from Rashad Clement and um, uh, <laughs> Shadi, 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 uh, Shadi, Shadi, Shadi's actually in the studio with us. Shadi, our engineer. Shadi's actually our engineer. He's over here in the cut, still in the cut. Shadi, say what's up, though. What's up? What's up, guys? What up, dog? Yeah. 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 yeah, sir. Yeah, what's up? What's up? What's up, guys? Radio voice. Yeah, yeah he do. Shadi, why don't you get into your question, bro? Well. My whole thing is with entrepreneurship, can you be truly happy? Can money make you truly happy? Like is money in the world we live in today, can money truly buy you happiness or can you get true happiness from just chasing money constantly over and over again? That's why I believe, I don't believe entrepreneurs do that, but like it's just something that I always hear entrepreneurs talking about like, how can I get to that next bag? How can I get this? How can I get that? It's like, you guys never actually take the chance to reflect on the accomplishments you guys already have. Yeah. So can 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 obtaining money actually be true happiness for an entrepreneur? I, I don't I don't know if obtaining money, the actual act of obtaining money brings you happiness, but I'm sure I'm sure these guys strongly believe in this point here, but I, I do believe that money provides you with freedom, right? And freedom gives you that happiness, mm -hmm. right? So I don't think it's necessarily the money. I think it's it's what the money could provide you or allow you to do with your life that brings you happiness. To, I, I say that, and I just wanted to be clear that there are a plethora, plethora of millionaires, billionaires, people who own buku bread who just aren't happy as well, you know? so. Like it just because it provides you the freedom, it doesn't always necessarily equate to the happiness. But um, I will say that you know the, the 
the money or the freedom or the freedom that you get from the money uh, won't necessarily fix any problem that you may have, but it'll help any situation. Those those, those are my thoughts. <laughs> yeah, on it. Yeah, there's. It's not. It's not that. It's not just having currency. It's not just having looking at your account and saying, "Yo, I got a million dollars in my account." Right? It doesn't do anything for you. Right? But it's the elimination of stress. Yes. That money can do for you. Yes. That that's what makes you happy. All right. And also, sometimes for a lot of us, our happiness is is tied to our success, right? And all success is is just reaching your goals. Whatever your goals is, reaching your goals. And as long if we reach our goals, we're more likely to be happy. All right. So this year, last year, I should say, my father died. He passed away in June. All right. And one thing that what that eliminated my stress is being able to help pay for the funeral all right now we don't have that ability to pay for emergencies things or medical issues because we're all going to get sick absolutely right that's going to that's going to help increase our stress so having money is is, is a stress eliminator when we could because because we can use that money to you know, take care of emergencies, take care of, we, we can use it to travel, right? When we feel trapped and when we need to get away, right? That's why it's important to have money. And it's not the actual, it's not just having money that makes us happy. It's what we can do with money. It's how, what, how we can use the money, right? I want to um, have space and have a big house, right? Money is going to do that. I want to eat and not be confined to, you know, noodles and, and rice and, you know, I want to experience mm-hmm. the fine things in life and, and money, it's it's a feeling, right? Why do you want to experience the fine things in life? Because it's going to give you a feeling mm-hmm. and money's going to help you bring that feeling, right? And I think ultimately that's what we're looking for and that's what most people are searching for, not just to say, yo, I'm rich or I'm successful. I'm Nobody cares about that. We care about what it can do for us. Facts. Yeah. Yeah, Duke, you you expressed that uh, uh, ever so eloquently. You know, I agree 110% with everything that you said. And then not only that, I feel like this is the nature of um, our country. You know, we live in a capitalistic society, mm-hmm. you know. And you play by the rules. You have to play, play by, by the rules. rules. You, you know, the most, peop- the most successful uh, people that we see are private owners, yeah. a.k.a. entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. You know, private owners create the systems for trade and currencies and things like that. Yep. So within that being said, you know, entrepreneurship is kind of that that's why it's it's so glamorized because of the ceiling that the ceiling height that it has. There is none. There is none. There is none. There is none. In entrepreneurship there's no ceiling. Mm-hmm. You know, but people also don't get to see that there is no floor either. Ooh. Wow. Say again. <laughs> <laughs> Say that one more time. <laughs> you know. Entre- he said, look, he said in entrepreneurship, there's no ceiling, but there's also no floor. There's no floor. Wow. There's no floor. I never heard that bar. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard that bar. That's dog. a nice and neat original. That's a nice and neat original. That's a nice and neat original. You know, and and that's if you've never taken an L before, you know, regardless of what level of entrepreneurship you guys are doing, um, I hope everyone knows who I'm speaking to when I say that. You take losses. Yes, you do. You take losses. Yes, you do. And and you know, within the day job, you don't really take much losses. Yeah. You know, you may not get the pay raise you want, but you're not taking a a, a real loss. Shit. Why though? It, because you get to go home. Because you get to go home. Yeah. You get to go home and not worry about the company. Yep. Yep. Right? Yeah. Right. Uh, and even though you may take a, a dub as an entrepreneur, it's still almost a loss because you got to reinvest that dub back mm-hmm. into the business. Like like I mentioned earlier, the business won't grow unless you continue to reinvest. You know, so you yeah, got, I love that. I love I, that. That's the, that's the I only. Love that. that's you the, have to have a reinvestment system for your business. You got to create that structure for you. You have to. You, and usually, when you work for you know a, a company or a corporation, it's already set up for for them. You don't even mm-hmm. have to think about that shit. Oh, unless unless like you just like strapped, press the cash right now. Yep. You shouldn't even touch your money for the first year. Yeah. That's, you should just mm-hmm. leave, leave it yep. in the account. You yep. should, that should not. You should not pay yourself the first year. Yep. Even that's, probably the second but year. Th- that's a tough thing for someone who, 
who just starting entrepreneurship, to, like that's a tough concept to grasp. Yeah, it's like y'all making this money, and what do you mean it's it's not mine? Yeah, it's yours though. It, it is yours, well, but it's it's the businesses. It's, business. it's, it's not yours. Money. It's the businesses. And you have to look at it like that. You yeah, know what I'm saying, and it, it's it's hard. It's yeah, hard at first. It is. It is tough. It is tough. Uh, this question right that I have here is from S Q underscore the guy. Um, how do you overcome fear in a new business venture? Um, I think, <laughs> I I think that that you know sometimes. We get old, and you know, as we as we mature into adulthood, we start to complicate. You, I think, simple things. You know, when you think about, you know, your fear of, as, as a child of like riding a bike, right? You know, the only way to get over that fear was to just hop on and 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 fall or experience whatever was gonna whatever was gonna come. You know, so I think my advice would to be my advice to you to overcoming that fear would be just to start. You know, a lot of us are fearful just because we haven't started. You know, mm -hmm. we're scared of what's going to happen. Are we going to fail? Are we going to make a mistake? You know, once you make those mistakes, once you start and you make those mistakes and you then you do fail, you realize, shit, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. You know, I could get back up on my feet and I could keep going and pursuing after my dreams and my goals. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I would encourage you to, you know, if you're looking, if you're figuring, trying to figure out a way to overcome your fear, you just got to start. And the, only, the unfortunate thing about that is no one could help you with that but you. You know, yeah. you got to put yourself out yeah. there. Yeah, I was, I was just gonna say, I don't, I don't think there's any advice for someone who's thinking about becoming an entrepreneur. Right. Ooh, say it. You know, anyone who asks me if they should become an entrepreneur because they ask me, I say don't. Yeah. If it's ever a question, and if that discourages you, you ain't. It ain't. If it discourages you, you ain't really about this. Yeah. You know, it's gonna be times where you know you, oh man, I woke up at six. I think I'm gonna go to bed tonight. I'm gonna get an early night in, and you're up till four in the morning. And you got to be back up at and seven. you got to be back up at seven. Yeah. You know, if someone has to encourage you to become an entrepreneur, like you got to understand being an entrepreneur is that's something that is a it's a privilege like of being an entrepreneur. It's a privilege. It's not something that's rewarded to you and just given to you like, oh, OK, cool. You worked hard. You deserve this now. No, no. Entrepreneurship looks like you worked the hardest day of your life and didn't actually get anything physically tangible. <laughs> <laughs> nothing nothing it's not a rewarding business it's, it'll never tap you on your back and say good yeah. job it'll never say congratulations you know your success today is tomorrow you can fail so your success is short-lived you know it's not like a job where you're employee of the month and then it takes another 30 to 31 days for another person to overthrow your your reign of being employee of the yeah. month no you can have the best day ever yesterday and have the worst one today. <laughs> ah. Entrepreneurship is inconsistent. So Entrepreneurship is down. extremely inconsistent. Look at the stock market. That's entrepreneurship. Yeah. Sheesh. It's definitely inconsistent. Sheesh. You know? What would you say, either of you, you know, to someone, how, how does someone determine what they want to do? Or if someone says like, yo, like I really, I want to be an entrepreneurship. I want to quit my job. But I really don't know what I want to do. Oh, don't, I'm sorry. Don't, don't quit your job. Don't quit your job. You could be an entrepreneur and still have your job. Mm. Don't quit your job. I don't, I don't think you can, you should, as an entrepreneur, don't ever just go to your job and you wake up, you're like, I'm going to take the leap today. That's mm. stupid. That's <laughs> actually stupid. stupid. Don't mm. do that. Stay at that job. Stay at the nine to five. Use your job. Your job starts at six. Yep. Work from six to 10. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nine to five. Okay, cool. Now I'll get to work from six to 10. Now when six to 10 starts making money, then you can have the conversation. But if six to 10 is not making any money, nine to five is where it's at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't leave your job. Yeah. The best entrepreneurs are made from other people's jobs. Use that job that you have to reinvest into what you're doing. Let that job be the fuel for what you're trying to do. I, I will say that I will say this as well because I just had this thought. Right, as an entrepreneurship, you do have to learn how to make investments. Okay, and we talked, we touched on, um, we touched on finding a mentor earlier to help facilitate your process through entrepreneurship. Right, but sometimes it's hard to find an individual, you know, that that has that you have access to that can be there for you whenever you want, right? So you cannot be afraid as an entrepreneur to invest in a course or a program that's gonna help teach you the tools that you need um, to help make you more successful. So um, just remember that, man, entrepreneurship is taking risk and making investments and you can't be afraid um, to ever 
you know, make either. So just be mindful of that. But I think we've been on for, I think we've been on for a while. So yeah, yeah, we have been on for a while. Um, I, and we'll we'll get off it. This is great conversation. Um, you guys make sure to tap in with this episode. But I, before I close this out, I do want to say that entrepreneurship is not for everyone. All right, I know we're sitting here talking about entrepreneurship, but yo, you you don't don't feel pressured by us just because that's what we do in our lives. That you, that you feel like you have to be an entrepreneur. You could have a great living and a great life. You know, working for a great corporation, a great business, um, and you know, and, and still enjoy life the way that we are as well. So I, I just want to put that out there. Entrepreneurship is not for everyone. You know, you got to be honest with yourself. You know, if you if, if you need someone to put a structure in place for you, then it, it's probably not for you. You want to stick with, you know, the nine to five route, you know, which is all good. It's a lot of security there. There's a lot of security in nine to fives. Mm -hmm. All right. So I, I rock with nine to fives. My dad had nine to five my whole life. Same. You oh, know, wow. so uh, there's nothing wrong with nine to fives. But um, as always, um, I want to thank you guys for tuning in, tuning in. Um, if you haven't already, head over to uh, the Apple Podcast app and leave a review. I know it's my, it's my second time <laughs> mentioning it, but we really, we really would appreciate the reviews. Um, the more reviews we get, uh, the more um, willing Apple will be uh, to feature us on the podcast uh, featured uh, page and that's something that could really help us continue to grow so uh, go ahead and leave a review whenever you can also if you're not already be sure to like a uh, comment and subscribe to the uh, nice and neat the podcast channel and with that said we'll get to the night the only way we know how um, that's with some positive energy some positive vibrations and a smile of course y'all get out go have a great one we'll catch up with you guys soon peace sure. you know sure. one of my you know, entrepreneurship, I feel like we've 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 deterred people enough. So if they're still <laughs> listening, you know, I will say this. <laughs> One of my favorite things about entrepreneurship is the freedom of time. Right. And when mm -hmm. I say the freedom of time, I don't mean I'm only going to work 30 minutes today and not do anything. It's like I can allocate my eight hours that I'm going to put into a different time area it doesn't have to be just that that nine to five slot zone right, right right so for example we're here shooting this podcast right now all three of us have work to do right we have we all have work to do we all have things to do but on thursdays we could just allocate our time differently yeah you know it, it's plenty of days of the week where i'm actually working at this this, this time mm -hmm. yeah. you know but like today i can allocate my time differently and that's one thing that i've, I've i was able to see early on that i was like i like that aspect mm -hmm. yeah. you know and i think that's why it's so important that when you that entrepreneurs work from a place of passion yeah you know starting off i don't think you should kind of work from a place of um uh not necessarily just finances yeah but i don't think you should work from that place something until you enjoy. So, it, yeah you enjoy. right i don't think you should work for, from a place of something you necessarily don't enjoy yeah. until you created a structure yeah. a foolproof system to like okay this works mm -hmm. all right i love selling clothes now well hmm let's see if i can sell licorice now Mm -hmm. Right, because licorice is popping. Yeah, you know, it's I don't like, like licorice. I don't care for licorice but like I, that. But it's bad business. It's, it's, it's <laughs> popping. You know, I don't business. care for licorice. Yeah, I don't care for it. But it's, pop, it's moving. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Let me get on that. You know, and you have to you have to have a structure for that. So when you're able to see, and I don't want people to take it for granted. I don't want to talk our listeners to take it for granted. But when you're able to see someone in one facet of entrepreneurship move into another area don't take that lightly mm. yeah that's pure structure I, that, that person got a system they have a they system got, that person got a system you know it's just like and we spoke about this earlier duke you know we look at these um um i'm calling mega entrepreneurs uh and I'll, like for example we use like a grant cardone or a gary v mm -hmm. those guys are entrepreneurs as well but their system is so foolproof that we see them put it out and we're like oh it worked because they've been that successful throughout time it's years 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 we see the glitz years. and the glamour fam. yeah we see the yeah. glitz and the glamour these dudes have started businesses failed started businesses failed started businesses failed bro and yep. now they're in a position where they're recognized and notarized as some of yep. the best entrepreneurs in the world right you know? right but oh, that those those accolades don't come without failures yeah. and yeah let's just call them these experiences yes. mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you don't you don't gain that without going through those things. Yeah, Gary Vee looks so tired. He looks so tired. <laughs> 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 but he looks like an entrepreneur in the face, you know. Entrepreneurs are tired. Entrepreneurs, Entrepreneurs are tired. Are tired. Entrepreneur, I, I told you this the other day. I was like, "Yo, so far in my thirties, I've just been tired. <laughs> I've just been tired, bro. Yeah, like, I, I don't. Every week, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna catch up on some sleep. This and week. you know what's crazy? What you also told me is, man, I've been hitting my stride. And that's a part of it. So, so yeah. what can I do? Exactly. I'm in stride. I'm gonna stop now. Nah, nah. I'm striking while the iron is so, hot. So mm-hmm. basically, basically, guys, um, to anybody thinking about entrepreneurship, starting a business, starting a brand, um, and you are on the fence about it, or you think about it, just understand that it's a mental game, and it's a it's a long game. Mm, it's all right, long it's game. not it's not something most. If you are super popular or you are, you know, you got this cult like following already, it'll be easier to sell to your audience and things like that. Right. But for most of them, for most of us, the average person. Right. You're going to have to take your time with it and have patience. Right. And understand that it's a long game and you have to have mental fortitude. Mm -hmm. Right. To, um, you know, weather, weather the storm. Right, because it is going to be a whirlwind. It's going to you know you're going to have your ups and your downs, and it's going to be like I said, stressful, and your emotions are going to be all over the place, you know. Mm-hmm. And you have to learn how to keep those things in check, um, and also learn how to detach sometimes to get yourself in check, and you know, focus on your self care to come back. All right, so entrepreneurship is, you know, it's hard, but it is rewarding. Yeah, you it know, is. it, it yes, is rewarding. It is. So, um, not to discourage you. But or not, not to discourage you, but to encourage you, um, and yeah, yeah. I mean, cause hey, look, the highs is high. The highs is high. Like, I, I mean, looking at y'all Instagram, I see y'all on vacation on Tuesdays. The highs is high. That, that the lows is lows. Though. But the lows, lows is low. But, more more importantly than that is finding a way to find a balance in between the two. So yeah. when you get too high, you don't get too high. Yeah. And when you get too low, you don't get too low. Right. right? Mm-hmm. You kind of find a way to just. Hey, whatever happens, something great happens today, right. cool. Something right. bad happens today, cool. Right. It's all good. Like you said, right. I could weather the storm, yep. what, whatever neutral. it is. Stay yep. neutral. Yeah. If someone was interested in becoming an entrepreneur in, in your respective fields, would you guys be willing to kind of like mentor someone or walk them through, you know, what it what it takes to be where you at? For sure. Absolutely. For sure. Because like I said, man, I wish I had that. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And what happens is, especially um, people in our community, we get up, right, or find our way in a specific craft and we learn a way and we go through the struggle and we're like, well, they got to go through the struggle. Because I went through it. Yeah. Right? That's kind of the mentality. Yeah. Well, if I went through the struggle, they got to go through the struggle and we got to make people go through the struggle to prove that they're worthy, right? They got to they gotta prove that they're worthy. So I definitely would be open to mentoring somebody and just trying to help their process be a little smoother, right? Because I, even though I don't know everything, I would still try to help their process be smoother because I know that's a strenuous, strenuous um, time. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. I, I don't know everything either, but I, I'm definitely be willing to share my mistakes, man. Yeah. So you, don't, so, you don't have, so you don't have to make the same ones. You're going to make your own, but at least you don't make the ones that I made. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't like asking people what you know, like what their wins were. It's like, yo, like where where was your losses at? Yeah, for real. You know, wh- where were your losses at? What did you do? Yeah, you know, because we you figure out more when you actually do kind of take an L. Always. This, how Always. much can you learn from a Facts. win? Facts. All, Facts. I mean, you could learn. You could learn something from a win. I mean, not as not much as you. Much. Not as much as you can learn from an L. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. Um, and one more thing, man. Um, when you have someone that's as a mentor. Or someone that's in your corner guiding you, people always say, oh, well, you just got to ask the right questions, right? But you don't even know the questions to ask, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So having someone in your corner is going to say, yo, you didn't ask this question, but this is, hey, by the way, Mm -hmm. yeah, this is what's supposed to happen when when this happens. This is where I dropped the ball at, right? This is where I... Cause you're not gonna ask a question. Cause you don't know. No one's gonna ask about certain net thirties and net sixties when it's time to pay for uh, production. Yeah. Yep. Right. You, hey yo. By the way, when you go on since, there, since you ask said it, what's 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 net thirty? What's net sixty? So basically, mm. shit you don't want. Basically, <laughs> net fifteen. Yeah. <laughs> net net next day. <laughs> net next day. <laughs> basically, in my case, right? If I want to go, if I want to create um, a collection of clothes, right, and I go to the manufacturer, and we have a good relationship. Um, I can say, hey, um, Johnny, right? I need you to make this collection. He's like, okay, cool. Well, usually 
I would pay for the collection and then they would make the clothes, right? But if you got a good relationship with the manufacturer, you can say, hey, I can pay you in 30 days, but I need you to make the clothes now, mm -hmm. right? So he's on the receiving end of the net 30, yep. mm -hmm. right? So for instance, if I do a brand deal, right? And they're like, hey, we need you to get this content in, right? But you're gonna get the content now, we're gonna pay you 30 days later. Mm -hmm. Right, so now I'm on the receiving end of the, of the 30 days. That's net 30. Net 60 is two months. Yeah. Net 15, yeah. whatever it means. So basically, net is like 15 days after it's delivered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, that's so typically yeah. like a company's policy. Te 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 yeah. Technically, a company's policy. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So as a fashion company, I can impose that same thing if yep. I have a good relationship with a, a manufacturer. Yep. Um, but yeah, like I said earlier, I hope you guys got a ton of knowledge from that, man. We're going to wrap this episode up. Um, uh, make sure you guys, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel for all our viewers. Uh, make sure you guys, um, subscribe to our podcast on Apple podcasts, listen to our podcast, let's, uh, leave a review, mm -hmm. share, right? Share everything you hear on social media, everything you see, share with a friend, comment, post. We need all that support. Um, but as usual, we like to add as much value to your lives as possible. And the best way we know how to do that is by highlighting other podcasts that can offer value as well. And this week's podcast that I'm going to highlight is called Million Dollar Life Lessons. And it's hosted by Prince Donnell and his wife, Dana Chanel. Awesome people on Instagram. Um, and it really focuses on just entrepreneurship. Prince Donnell is a tax expert. Um, he talks about getting your taxes straight, talks about life insurance. Um, Dana Chanel is a serial entrepreneur. She has something called the Curl Bible. She has a bunch of other things. She has the number one like black owned app in the world. So definitely check it out. She, they offer a ton of knowledge and um, you know, make sure when you comment and leave a review and tell them nice and neat sent you. But with that said, man, I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. And this is Nice and Neat. And that's that on that. I'll be the one to take the risk to go and get them bands. I'll be the one to never sit and go and make a plan. Knowing my mother getting old and I don't got no time. Gotta keep a couple for the road or else get left behind.